Payday 3 finally gets a new publisher, Project Athea gets a new name finally, and Microsoft's new Xbox event is coming this week. Hey what's up everybody and welcome back to Gamer Connect. My name is Gavin Manis and you guys are watching top gaming news of this very week with some really exciting news of new games and new names. Fortnite season 6 cinematic trailer had some of its moments which were very similar. Amazing action with goofy moments. And it turns out that this trailer was actually co-directed by the Russo brothers. The ones who made Avengers Infinity War and Endgame as well as Captain America Civil War. It was reported by Variety that Russo brothers were called to help not only with John C's intro but also with other character development moments that will drop in season 6. Rooster Brothers have said in a statement that the chief creative officer of Epic is a visionary storyteller who continues to take us into an unexplored territory and since Fortnite has a huge mark in the pop culture, they were happy to help. Well, this is not the first time that Rooster Brothers worked with Fortnite because they also worked back when Infinity War was about to come out and Fortnite had this crossover of Fortnite and Infinity War. So they even helped Fortnite with that. And this season 6 also looks like sort of Infinity War where multiple characters are coming together to fight one last war. And it looks really good though. Even though I never play Fortnite and I don't like Fortnite, but I really like how their cinematic trailers look. It looks really, really cool. It looks really cinematic and gives me the chills, gives me the feel that a cinematic movie or a superhero movie would give. And that is exactly what Fortnite is doing. And I am very much appreciative of that, that they're doing that. Cannot say the same about the game because uh, I, I don't find anything in there. After a rough couple of years for the studio of Payday, Starbreeze, where the studio was going bankrupt because of low sales with overkills The Walking Dead. And with that, they have filed the reconstruction due to shortage of money. Not only that, the CEO, Bo Anderson, resigned as well. Following that, former Starbreeze CFO was charged with insider trading where him along with the former CEO sold their shares in the company which led to a raid by the Swedish police. Anderson was cleared because he was forced into selling the shares. The combined amount of fines and recovered assets adds up to an amount of 58,000 euros. With the company suffering so much and the overkills The Walking Dead did not do anything at all with bad critics and well not very good gameplay and not selling that much they went back to the most successful franchise, that is Payday. Now, they finally found a publisher, that is Coach Media, the parent company of Deep Silver, the studio behind the Metro games. Payday 3 has been in development for a while now and last year it was reported that the game was being made in Unreal Engine. This deal goes beyond the initial release of Payday 3 to include up to 18 months of game as a service support, similar to what Starbreeze did for Payday 2. Payday 2 worked really well as in 30 days they had around 2500 concurrent players. Which, which is very good to be honest. There's still lots of work need to be done for Payday 3 as Coach Media themselves said that it might come out around 2023. So definitely there's a lot of work but at least it's very good that they got a, a team to publish the game which is something that a game definitely needs. Last week we saw an event by Square Enix where they talked about two big games. One of them was Project Athea. Project Athea was showcased first last year with the teaser as an RPG fantasy game. But there was not so much information on the name. As Project Athea is not the name of the game, it's actually the name of the project. So the name of the game is something else, which I think they didn't know until then. But now we know. This event actually revealed that it's called Forspoken and it's coming to PC and PlayStation 5 in 2022. In this game, actor Ella Balinska from Charlie's Angels, yep that movie, is playing the role of Frey, an ordinary woman who must harness her magical ability to survive in this magical yet dangerous world. She was very much excited when she saw a dragon. They did show a few gameplay elements of the game which actually looked really good with some really quick movements, with dashing, it looked really cool and of course, fighting using magic. Not only that, Tech 9 Studios, the ones behind Life is Strange Before the Storm, are bringing Life is Strange True Colors, which is the third installment in the Life is Strange saga, where you play as Alex and her powers is to visualize people's emotion. She can feel what others are feeling and may even know why they're feeling that way. And if she gets too deep, I believe she destroys the space around her. The game has added motion capture which makes the game really cool and not only that also brought a singer by the name MXM Toon who sings for her character. The game does look great, improvements in visuals and even lip syncing. It's not the very best, okay? It's still there. 
The best thing about this game is they will release the full game all together instead of releasing one episode every 2-3 to three months. That's the best thing. So you can get the game on September 10th, the full game, 5 episodes, I don't know how many episodes are there but all the episodes all at once. Not only that, if you buy the deluxe edition of this game, you get Life is Strange the first game remastered and Life is Strange Before the Storm remastered and the remastered version looks really good. I mean they didn't show any gameplay but the, the faces they looked much more better. After watching those remastered trailer, I didn't cry, you cried okay, I, I'd never cry. I'm very much excited for both the games, cannot wait for Forspoken because it looks really good and I really want to play this and also Life is Strange True Colors. Although it's a little bit too much when you have to buy the game for 3000 being Life is Strange. I remember Life is Strange 1 was a thousand rupees. Actually no, it was less than that. And now we have Life is Strange 3 for 3000. Well will you guys be playing Forspoken or Life is Strange or both? Let me know in the comments below. The new ID at Xbox event will be happening this week on March 26th and Microsoft plans to show new trailers and gameplays for more than 25 games. Expect some of those to be indie games. For now Microsoft said that they will showcase Stalker 2, Second Extinction, The Ascent, Wild at Heart, Void Train, XO1 and many more. ID at Xbox is also teasing new announcements from studios such as Human Fall Flat Publisher, Curve Digital, Loop Hero Publisher, Devolver Digital, Ash Walker's publisher, Dear Villagers. Of course, this isn't as big as bringing the first party title, for example, Fable 4, but this actually allows other developers, such as these indie developers, to work on their game and not only that, showcase their game. And I think this is a very great place to showcase just that. That, or people will just start disliking the video on YouTube and complain it about on Twitter. Well, Human Fall Flat was a very cool game. It was very fun with a group of friends and I hope they bring something like that again. At least you will get to know about Stalker 2 and also Second Extinction, which is a dinosaur co-op game. I mean, you are human. You have to kill dinosaurs. <laughs> it's not the other way around. I mean, that would be so much better if we were the dinosaurs and we had to eat the people. Ooh, they should make a game like that. The next game from Warner Batman series is Gotham Knights and is being delayed. When it was announced last year, it was supposed to release this year but now it's releasing next year. This came from a tweet from Gotham Knights that they are giving more time to develop this game in a better way. The most possible reason would be Pandemic which right now is growing and is becoming more dangerous than ever. Batman Gotham Knights is not a game set in the Arkham universe but still it definitely looks like Arkham. Only this time people actually live in that city. The game is made by a different studio, Warner Brothers Montreal and the game has roughly picked up where Arkham Knight left off. If you have played that game, you definitely know about it. Well only time will tell whether Gotham Knights would be any successful as that of Arkham series as Rocksteady Studios, the one who made the Arkham series, are also making a new game that is Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Which we only got a cinematic trailer so far so I don't know when that game is coming out but I am looking forward to it I think? Question mark? Well, that will wrap up this episode of Top Gaming News. I hope you guys liked it, enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comments below. If you think there is any kind of improvement that I can do, let me know in the comments below as well. And also, do not forget to hit that like button and subscribe because most of these videos, much more actually this time, <laughs> will be coming to Gamer Connect and you don't want to miss that out. So, I will see you guys in the next week and until then, stay awesome, stay frosty and keep gaming.